all our viewers out there, sometimes we try so hard to be an entrepreneur. And it happens that it's right under our noses, but we're not looking at the opportunity. Because diba, some people are so hard set on doing this, and there's like five things doable here. Would you want to give them advice on how to spot opportunities? Go, look at the blue light. Um, just look at what the market, what your, your customers are telling you. Because originally, we wanted a lot of products. Yeah. Yeah. And then we, we cut down because we saw as we moved along, especially during the Christmas season, there are lots of orders. We figured out what's seasonal, what's a daily purchase, mm. what's a... Uh, Pasalubong for kids on a payday night. Oh. Because um, we had so much, like at, originally we had seven products and then we cut it down to four now. Mm -hmm. So uh, th that's what you have to do because even if you want to be, for example, you want to be famous for a cupcake and there's so many people selling cupcakes. Some mm -hmm. are very pretty, some have, you know, their own nutrition <clears throat> factors to it. But you have to choose where you're good at what your what, what your customers are asking for on their end and you have to listen to them okay it's very interesting because when i asked abby i said you have so many yummy things and you were making so many kinds and i said how did you decide and see abby here is an extremely organized orderly person you know one two three four five i will not forget the five words of advice you gave me can I tell it to them? This is what Abby told me. Give them what they want. Okay, can you expound on that? Because um, when we started, um, I was um, still doing my master's in, in grad school. And my partner, Denise, also works as a full-time lawyer. So what we did was um, we sold our products to mm -hmm. my classmates and her office mates. Mm. And then we adjusted based on their feedback. So you're really heavy on feedback? Yes, because that's very important. We, we choose our market who we want to sell to, and then we listen to what they say. Hi, I love you, my dear. You see, that is my advocacy, getting more Filipinos to appreciate, to welcome, and to ask for feedback. Because, you know, generally, people react with violent reactions to feedback in this country, diba? Yes, bro. So it's amazing that you have the right team up your partner is a lawyer and cases work on feedback. And your middle name is Order. Tell people how orderly you are. Come on, tell them. <laughs> well, super orderly that um, I, I work really well on schedules. Mm. Uh, can I say it? If you want only. If you don't want, no. <laughs> well, I, in, uh, that was 2008. That's 10 years ago. I was diagnosed with... Um, obsessive compulsive disorder okay now let me react to that many people think that certain um, behaviors um, stop them from performing what I do is tell people what is it that is labeled as a disorder how do you turn it around and make it your extreme niche because if you look at huh, Bill Gates Steve Jobs Mark Zuckerberg they must have been hyper focused i mean to some extent because to get to where they got themselves they had to have what not only persistence but the ability to not ever give up for you it's really orderly schedules and in a country where everybody's late maybe you can start a party list or uh, a campaign tagline that uh, you will make every Filipino on time. So, um, share with the people how being orderly, how you're able to add value to businesses and people's lives by being extremely orderly. Um, first and foremost, uh, I look at the things that really matter. What does that mean? Um, I compartmentalize the many goals in mm -hmm. a big goal. Because for okay. example, there, there's a huge goal to it. Um, for example, just getting to one place. Mm -hmm. So one would be as simple as getting into your car. That's mm -hmm. goal number one. And then leaving your location, goal number two. And then actually getting there. So there are three steps into that goal. Mm -hmm. So you have to look at all the necessary com um, compartments per little goal and overcome them. 
step by step. Accomplish. Yeah. Then you and I must have been twins separated at birth. That's a checklist. Yes. Yeah. Well, that's basically a checklist, but in in my mind, mm. it's like little blocks. Mm. So if, if for you that works as a checklist, fine, because that that keeps you going within your day, mm. gets you gets things done. And for me, maybe it's just how my mind works. Yeah. So it's little blocks, like it's filling, it's filling. You know how Tetris works, and then when it's all complete, mm. it gets wiped out. Okay, there the age is showing. <laughs> See. Be, how old are you? 29. Oh, sige, she's 29 Tetris. I'm a senior citizen, ano? <laughs> but it's true because it's nice that the millennials, you, you can look at it as a game. But for the seniors, well, it's a checklist. But the bottom line is we must have an accomplishment report at the end of the task. Can you tell the people there what is the one main benefit of being extremely orderly? Because... Ay, nako, don't get me riled up, ha? Because I hate scatterbrain people and I hate people who say pwede na, bahala na. So, can you inspire them to be more orderly and think like your Tetris brain? The best thing, I guess, the best advantage of having, uh, you, you think about these things is you don't miss anything. There you go. You don't miss out. You don't miss out. You don't miss anything. Forget. You don't make mistakes, especially for the important things, like the one you said with the pilot. Mm. Yeah, I also worked for an airline when I was in Canada. Mm -hmm. And it's even if you do the same things over and over and over, especially with lives at stake. Yes. That's very important. I'm, I'm so delighted that you said lives at stake. In a simple form, huh? people in the kitchens at home, in, in the simplest home, if you do not put your knife in a safe place and you have toddlers and kids and there's a brownout, lives are at stake. That's true. Do you know I have notes all over my house? Remember I said post it? Yes. So I, uh, yeah, it's terrible for the paint, no post it, masking tape, scotch tape, but I learned never duct tape. That's terrible. It just peels <laughs> off everything, right? But, but, but that's it. It's basically what you said, no? having your little squares. Me, I really put it by the door. Okay, people, you, you'll know how I live. You know, my door, uh, the door going out of my unit, I, I live in a flat. I really put there, cell phone, keys. <laughs> you know, like the list you see in toilets? Yeah. Diba? Like, yeah, my house looks like that. So, Abid, are you like that? Maybe I'm also like, <laughs> I'm OC. Well, I put my things in one location. Like the things that I need to grab when I'm in a hurry, mm. they're all in one location. Just so when I really need to go, I grab it and go. All right. Um, you don't have to... Yeah, like people who go through a bag messy. You know, my bag, I, I, I think I showed you, no? I have a little bag for this, a little bag for that. So I, if I... Exactly, I pull your, out your one... Your bag is like my mind. has many compartments. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not people even say you buy an organizer for the bag. No, it's so weird because I have different colors, different sizes, <laughs> different design. Nothing matches, so I don't make a mistake. No, diba? That's necessary, especially that you, you know, time's money and yeah. you, you do this for people too. And spend, well, in my case, it's because I don't have staff. So I really have to do everything. Um, and I have, I must say thank you to Mercury Drug. No, I'm not getting paid to say this. You know their calendar? Yeah. I have one in the kitchen, one in the bedroom, one in the toilet. I, I have one in the sala because it's the right size to just put my reminders. It's actually very nice to look at it and it's also clean. <laughs> Here you have two <laughs> characters like this. Um, what some of my friends have that the stress from home goes to the business, the stress from the business is argued about at home during dinner. Uh, can you give advice on how to disengage emotions? From the very start of the business, before you even engage or sit down about it, you set clear rules. That at for for example, at when the when the shop is closed, we're done talking about it. Mm. When we get home, we're done talking about it. We're we're at home. We're partners here or a family here. Mm -hmm. We don't talk about business at home anymore. Ah, okay. That is so... 
That is a challenge. It is, but it helps. How do you control yourself? Like if you had some business disagreement, and how do you get nice over dinner? That's kind of, I'm trying, Maluma Fori Mercader, ano, what is your comment on this? Di ba like, if you had an argument in the in the office, in the business, then you're having dinner. Or if you have a personal argument, and then in the office, what if someone asks you, don't talk to me? <laughs> How do you handle that line? We, we call a timeout. Oh. Okay. Because for example, it's getting too late. Like for example, we're Close closing at 9 o'clock or 8 o'clock because we have customers. Mm. Or whatever time it is. And then after that, we discuss the little things that need to be discussed. And if it can wait until tomorrow, mm. we will have a time out. So that is where your orderly mind, people understand this is mindset management to the max. That takes a lot of discipline and it self-mastery. Does, does. Yeah, because if you don't, uh, if you don't apply it, it will take a toll on, not only on your relationship, but also on your personal um, well-being. Yeah, because you'll be stressed 24 hours. Exactly, and you can't even sleep properly and you will have, you know, you can even clear your mind before you go to bed. Give, how, Ex- example, it's 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, okay, we were arguing. Time out, eh? <laughs> it's so hard naman. No, um, um, we will check at, okay, we have um, 10 to 15 minutes to discuss this. Okay, what, what what's your point? Or what do you want to say? So she will say it and then, are you done? And then it's my turn to talk about it. And then after that, okay, are we good? Can we wait until tomorrow? Because it's getting late. Okay. And then we just go move on. That is excellent because you can see my advocacy. It's face-to-face communication skills and conversational fluency. And this is what I'm trying to make people understand. Um, very often, we ask a simple question and the person in front of us gives us a very long gobbledygook, discombobulated pontification that still doesn't answer the question with a yes or no. So is it lucky that both of you have clear communication skills or one had to learn from the other? I had to learn from her. Oh, yeah. how and why? Because she's a lawyer, so I, she wants to get straight to the point. Oh, I like her. She yeah, because there. during our conversations, you know, I want to go around with my mm. business. So I want to tell the backstory, etc. Mm. What she wants is the facts and the end goal of the conversation. So I had to mm. adapt to that. Now that's interesting because you are a person who has your life in your order. How did you share with the people? How did you adapt? Because it's not easy. It, it's really not easy. I think it's also part of having a relationship outside the business that you can see the intention of the person is not to pull you down mm-hmm. but to help you as well when when she, when when she corrects me mm-hmm. she she always gives me um a warning that says I'm not saying this to hurt you or pull you down or or to feel that you're any less than you are oh so it's the intro yeah she actually has good intros Maybe I should guest attorney, Denise, okay? Um, because uh, the intro, for me, I tell people, not everybody has the ability to be articulate. Especially then it becomes a problem. Oh, it says here, Balumar Fori Mercader says, I am not as disciplined as Abby. She has organized both personal and business matters. Bravo, Abby. <laughs> <laughs> from Malu. Thank That's... you, Miss Malu. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's a challenge. Again, like I said, no, you are lucky that she's articulate and she and precise and concise. You know me, I like clear, precise. Yes, no, true, false, straight. Le- because the first step determines where you go. Remember, what's your thoughts? Now, she's also lucky because you are willing to adjust. Many people, two things, are not willing or in multiple tele- intelligences seem to not be capable. They're just slow. Maybe they will in 25 years. <laughs> so she's lucky that you are able to shift. 
I'm not even sure if it's a scientific thing behind it, but you know what they say when two people click mm. on the same wavelength. Mm. So I understand her that way, which is why I think I was ready or willing. Because if it had been another person, I probably would not be willing. So it takes a certain... Um, they, some people call it suerte, time and space, diba? If it was too early, maybe not. If it was too late, also maybe not, no? Correct. And if it was another business, maybe also maybe not. So there's such a thing as luck, suerte and timing? I think there is. Mm, very good. You know, I like what you just said. So now everybody, listen out there. There has to be discipline, there has to be order, and there has to be willingness to adjust. And then, the action of really correcting and adjusting. Okay, so I'm very glad. You know, I must shake your hand. Thank you very much, <laughs> Abby. You, and this is what we do here. We, we talk about um, our, our obstacles. A big round of applause. Oh, applaud yourself. Applaud yourself.